Okay, everyone, good afternoon. My name is Ashley Fogg. I'm the Director of Communications and Development for the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge. And we're excited to have you here for our first presentation of our Create You webinar series. This webinar series is des designed for artists and arts organizations and its professional development. So we are excited to have you here today. Um, for more information on the Arts Council, you can go to our website, artsvr.org for membership, learn about our benefits, um, as well as arts events in the community, um, resources like this, and so much more. So um, just a few housekeeping rules right now, whenever you log on, everybody is automatically muted. So just make sure you keep your phone muted if you're calling in. Um, and we're also going to take question and answers throughout the session. So on the bottom of your screen, you'll see where it says chat. Click that and questions will come directly to me as the host. And um, after Courtney's presentation, we will take uh, many of your questions. So please send those throughout the presentation and we will try to address as many as we can. Um, so now, without further ado, let's start the presentation. Everyone has dreams. Everyone has a way they've always hoped their life would turn out. We live in a society full of people trying to jet to success but the road to success is straightforward, hustle and hard work. And as Courtney Hustle Scott will tell you, there are no shortcuts. Just an ever evolving journey that is filled with limitless connections and unexpected twists and turns. Hard work and determination has been the driving force behind Courtney's dream catching. She prides herself in her ability to make things happen and be a force behind those who hustle. Courtney is the founder and principal strategist of Buy-In Group, a strategic consulting firm that builds systems, strategies, and solutions for organizations and businesses. Buy-In Group recently launched their media division with the community platform, Be Baton Rouge, which profiles life in Baton Rouge through the urban lens. So today, Courtney will be sharing the art of hustle, how art of hustle is a digital conversation about how to promote yourself, your brand, while still maintaining the integrity of your soul, creativity, and well-being. Instead of telling you that now is the time to start killing it online, when isn't there a time for that? Um, we want to help you leave a footprint that you can authentically celebrate. So, Courtney, welcome and take it away. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to spend your lunch with us today here, um, of course, with Arts Council. So we are going to talk about authentically being you and the art of each and every one of your hustles, right? So we always talk about celebrating authenticity. So I'll be the first person to share something. Um, Ashley talked a lot about buying group, but recently um, I was appointed to a position within Mayor Broom's office as the chief service officer. So I am reporting to you live from City Hall today. Um, on, a, I guess what we'll call a lunchtime, spending some time sharing with you, but that's all about your authenticity. And of course, we'll talk about how I even converted some of those things into my social media and sharing things with yourself. So there are a few slides that I'll be sharing, but this is more about engaging conversation um, and talking. I'm going to talk for a bit. And then of course, Ashley encourage each and every one of you to ask questions. There's a chat box that should be flashing at the bottom of your screen. She'll be taking those questions um, and kind of rallying them all in the end, and we'll go from there. So every person that's here today, of course, is an artist in their own right, and I also feel like that is something that everyone shares, regardless of whether you're in business, you're a creative, communications, mechanical industry, whatever it is, everything that we do every single day has the art that we have to collectively share with our community, the larger community, and of course, just to make sure that people know the love and light that you're trying to share and put out there in the industry. So without further ado, I am going to share my screen with you so we can get started. All right. So of course you see the first thing on here is open, feel, share. And that's what it's all about because this seems like um, something that's, wait, are we about to go through psychology here? What is this? What's happening? Well, actually that's what being authentic is all about and sharing um, you know, the elements of your brand and the hustle that you have going on within your life. In business, we use the word hustle and buying group as setting a 
spirit of excellence, setting a spirit of moving forward, and how you approach the day-to-day -day of what you do. And again, that all starts with what you have going on in your world. It's all about how you approach it and your mindset. It's the hard work, the energy that you put behind it to bring something into fruition to the world, whether it's your art, writing, and of course, a product or a service. Everyone here has something different that they have going on, but it's all about how you approach it from the back end. And the back end is what we're talking about today in authenticity. We are in a world of social media where you feel like you have to fit the mold in order to be successful. You feel like you have to be a part of what everyone else is doing, how they're sharing the perfect picture, the perfect capture. And that's absolutely not the case. It's all about you and your originality. So the reality is that you, yes, each and every one of you is what sets your business or your brand apart and what people will notice. It is your own unique skills, your styles, the quirks, things like technology not working for us and for the last five minutes that makes it go. You don't get in a panic, you just make it all flow and that's what's going to resonate with your audience and your tribe and undoubtedly make a deeper connection that a generic post or interaction ever will. Let's think about this for a second. If you're in a room in real life with a bunch of people, it looks like we have about 18 to 20 people the last time I checked in this room that we're in. Let's imagine that we are all standing in this room in real life. Despite the fact that you see that I have on stripes today and stripes in this picture, <laughs> the thing that's going to make you remember me is because I'm the host. I'm the person that's talking to you today, but it's about that interaction. It's about how I made you feel. You know, if you're, if you're comfortable in this room to be able to talk to people day to day, then that's going to be something that you remember. You know, she was so relatable. That relatability is something that you want to resonate online as well. Not only that, if it's about the process, let's use the thought process of art, for example. If it's something that you knew that people took time to work on and they knew all the steps that it took to get you there, if you were creating that art right there in the room with us and we saw your process, we're going to know how hard you worked and that's going to resonate with us as well. So that's something that you'll be able to take and put on social media as well. The biggest thing is we wanna make sure that you are not shying away from the struggle. You know, if you've ever shied away from the revealing who you really are, your behind the scenes, your story, no matter how raw, no matter how bumpy. For example, today, if I was sharing and telling the story of this, I'd say to myself, you know, the first five minutes were a little bit hectic, but we got it going in the end. You want to make sure that you keep it real with people. You let them know everything that you have going in your process. Your own human experience is what's going to add soul to your brand and your business. And that's what's going to be that that's what's going to be the thing that people relate to. So I want everybody to kind of think about a moment that you felt like may have made or broke you in the things that you were doing every day. That is a passion point. The process behind the scenes is what people want to see. Well, what does that look like exactly? Well, we have a picture of a young lady here and let's say that she's researching for a presentation that she has to do. This photo lets you know that she's working day to day on this presentation. It's showing you that she has papers spread out all over the bed, that she has a book that she's reading and you're seeing that you're getting this information. So if you yourself were connected to the humans of New York and that's something that connected to you, now you have that one connection. There's something there that made you connect to them simply because they revealed who they were to you. So you wanna think about the times too that people ask you questions. People talk to you all the time about your business, about your art. Remember those questions because those are the things that you can reveal as well. When you're trying to think to yourself, I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to say in those moments to even make those connections. Well, as I mentioned, anything that helps you get along the way of where you were, any questions that people have asked you are things that you wanna make sure that you're connecting to because that's all about the soul of your business and what you have going on day to day. A lot of times everything seems like it has to be very, very polished, like it has to be very, very focused. And the thing is, uh, people like to know what's real. They like to know how you got where you are. They like to know the mistakes that you've made along the way because again, those are the points of connection. We use the example of a presenter here because that's what we did with that picture. Even if you're opening up a book that you're reading, 
and that quote stood out to you and inspired you in any way, you wanna capture that and share it as well. When you're talking about your own unique skills and styles, those are the things that are authentic to you as well. For me, it's all about building upon the blocks that you have going on in the world day to day. So again, I'm gonna take it back to what we talked about first, which is the struggle. How did your idea come to life? What is it that birthed the start that, for where you are today? That's one point that you can share with people. What's the memory that you connect? If it's an image of the city, if it's an image of your location, if it's an image of the space that you're creating in, those are things that you wanna be able to post because people want to see and know those things. Uh oh, sorry. Now we're gonna talk about how you can actually even make this happen, everything that I just said and where it starts. So of course you see here, we started with two things. There's art and there's science. The art of this is actually the beautiful side of it. Like I said, creating those moments, being captivating and creating. But then there's the science of it, which actually gets you to the social media breakdown every single day. So there's a few things with that. Number one, it's actually posting. It's actually the engagement, which are people connecting with you day to day. And then there's also the return and how you're going to make that happen to even close the gaps of posting. You're here because you want to know your money funnel. You want to know their motivation. You want to know the meaning. So we're going to break some of these things down. So we're going to start at the top of this circle where it starts with your brand story, where you're talking about what you're selling and what you're doing. And also we're going to talk about what's your brand. We started off talking about one important thing, all about you. It starts with you as the owner, as the business, as the creative, as the artist. It starts with your own background. You want to make sure that you're telling your stories. But there's a lot of times that your story may not be something that you feel like something is something everyone needs to know from start to finish. So there are boundaries with that. Just because we're sitting here today, I mentioned to you where I was and where I was sitting. But I could have said that I was anywhere. If it's a, a no-brainer for you that you don't want people to know anything outside of your art, then that can be a boundary for you. Those are things that you don't have to post. Let's figure out what background things that you want to share with people and that you do want to give them every day. And those are the elements that you'll stick to. Also, when we talk about telling your story, you're the writer of your story, no one else. So you think about it to yourself all the time and you're like, man, there's like 15 different parts of my life that I can talk about. Well, you select the one, two, three things that you want to share and you stick to those one, two, three things. You don't have to go and open up your entire life story and say what you ate for breakfast, what you ate for lunch. But if that's a part of your art, that's a part of your inspiration, sure. If it isn't, we'll scratch that off the list. Just because you see other people posting their food all day, doesn't mean that you have to do the same thing. That's something I think that everybody can believe in. Again, if it's something that inspires you and what you're doing day to day, then you can go from there. The other part of it is, what are you actually selling? What is it that you actually want people to know about you? That's what you want to make sure that you, that you build your story around. So for me, I'm a person that's a community curator. I love talking to people. I love connecting them and also building engagements around Baton Rouge. So if you were to go to any part of my social digital presence, that's something that you'll see. I'm always posting and talking about the city of Baton Rouge. I'm always talking about all of the great things that are happening here because that's a part of my story. That's a part of what I want people to know about me. So you think to yourself, what's that one thing that's for you? What is that one thing that you need people to know? And for everyone that may have questions, that may be one of the things of how do you identify that thing? How do you even identify what you're looking for? Well, the thing about it is you got to take some deep thought processes within yourself and say, well, I know that I love one, two, three. Start there. Every person's is going to be different. When you think about all the people that you see in the digital realm and they're all over the place, if you feel like they're all over the place, so does everyone else. Don't feel shy about that. Remember, you want three key things that you want to stick to that you want to be able to share day to day. 
And when you're looking for those things, it's what are you selling? What are your stories? And then those are going to be the things that are going to fall into what's your brand. And again, remember, what are your boundaries? You do not have to share everything all the time. If these are no brainers for you and you know that you don't want to do it, no problem. Don't go there. So next we're going to go over to your online magazine. <laughs> well, what does that mean exactly? Your online magazine is your presence in the digital space. It's all about you. It's your creative direction. It's your conversation. And of course, that's going to build your engagement later on. It's all about what you're looking to brand with people and what you're looking to see. When you start with creative direction, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, but those are all the things that started with your brand story. Because remember, we're talking about your items, your brand, and your story. Those are the things that will creatively share who and what you are. Don't be shy. You don't have to be afraid to share your space, even if it's not perfect, because those are all a part of the things that make you who you are. So then we're going to move on to your growing audience. Your growing audience are the people that are around you. And when you're starting from zero, it can be a little bit overbearing because you're like, wait a minute, I don't have 5,000 followers. I don't have 5,000 people here. That's okay too. Because a lot of the times there's this thing called engagement. Engagement is how many, how much the people that are present with you are interacting with you. So even if it's five people that are interacting with you every day, you will still have engagement. You will still have people that are there working with you and moving with you and vibing to the beat of your drum. That's the art of your hustle. It's because you want to make sure that the people that are there, your tribe, people that are connecting with you are there for you. So how do you get those folks? How do you begin to get them in? Well, you start by inviting the people around you, friends, coworkers, people who share the same interests. Even if it's right here within this group, you start with the same people that have a like mind and a like interest with you. And if it's just five, it starts off as just five, but you want to keep those five people really, really engaged. Then you'll start to find other people that are out there people that are interested in the same things that you're looking for. That's where those hashtags come in. And a lot of people always hashtag so many different things on social media and don't worry about it. Start with the things that compel you because you wanna make sure that you're creating an authentic space. Remember, this is your online magazine. This is your space and your creative direction for you to be able to create the energy and vibe that you're looking to build. So now we want to talk about, too, the captivating part of this, which is that pro-level content. You've thought about who you are and what you are and what you want to say. You've thought about the people that you want to gain and the people that are around you. And then you want to now figure out how are you going to interest them? How are you going to engage them? Well, the way that you're going to do that is you're going to show your work. It's really, really important. You want to show the work that you're doing every single day. How do you do that? How do you get it done? If you're the person that's there, how are you going to make sure that you want to do it? Well, you want to make sure that you hire or barter a professional photographer to share some of that lifestyle and to put yourself in action. A lot of times people don't like to take the time to share and to invest within themselves in that manner, but it's really, really important because remember, we want to tell your story the way that you build it. With that being said, you want to make sure that you take the time to do it professionally. Because remember, this is your online magazine here. This is your creative direction and the way that you want people to see you every single day. So when you're showing your work and you're showing the things that you're doing day to day, when you have that person there, they will be able to capture you in your authentic environment, be it your portrait studio, be it you know where you're painting on canvases, if you're beading or creating different items or things, you wanna have people there to be able to see it because that's the best way that people can see you in the light of your hustle. They can see you in the light of what you're doing every day because you can't tell that story, people need to see it, right? So I, I'm gonna pause right here because I think that we probably may have some questions from some of the things that, we're gonna that we talked about. Yes, we do. Um, the first one, it's a great question. 
which social media platforms are the most important to focus on when trying to advertise or sell my art? So additionally, which social media platforms are the best to use? So there's so many things out there, right? There are so many items and uh, places that you're able to share. The one thing that I would say is go where you have the largest audience for your art. Go to the place where people see and believe in what you're doing. Because a lot of times on social media, when we start off, we start off as a person. We start off as our everyday selves. The first thing that you want to do, um, the two that I always tell people about are, of course, Facebook and Instagram. On Facebook, you want to make sure that you have a Facebook page, not just your regular page, but a page created specifically for your art. And then from there, you're able to start inviting people from your everyday page to your actual business or brand page because those people are there for that. A lot of times, you know, we follow different people that we follow them because we were personal friends and then they get into a venture or into something and you're still there, but you're mm, not really interested in that. So you want to make sure that you have a page that's specifically for that. So that's a Facebook page. And of course, Google's our best friend if you don't have... Um, if you're not too savvy with that, you're able to go in and Google a Facebook business or brand page, and it'll give you all the steps to be able to set that up. The second platform that I tell people about all the time is Instagram. Instagram is so visually stimulating. It is the perfect place to be able to not only place art, it's the place for you to show your story and show your work as well. And then also people are very connected by what other people like and follow. Don't get intimidated on any of these pages about having um, a little bit of followers or the fact that you're growing your page. It's the perfect time for you to curate it and make it look exactly the way that you want to. Now, when you have a Facebook business page, Facebook and Instagram are connected and you can create an Instagram business profile as well. The reason why you want to do that is because you want to be able to get your analytics and you want to be able to get all of the details that goes along with those pages, how many people are following you, when they're following you, and where they come from. You can see everything from city locations, age groups, down to male and female. So you wanna make sure on both of those that you have business profiles set up, because even if you don't consider yourself to be selling day to day, you still get the information that you need when it comes down to that. So hopefully that's a good answer to that question. Courtney, we've gotten three questions about hashtags. So okay. <laughs> when you say hashtags, do I stay generic or do I make them specific to me? So that's a really, really good question. Here's the thing about hashtags. Hashtags, um, people use them very differently. You'll see some people that will create hashtags like hashtag striped shirt, hashtag black hair, hashtag bracelets, all because we're there. Well, if I'm not here talking about fashion, none of those hashtags will make sense to me. But because we're here today and we're talking about business, we're going to say hashtag social media marketing, hashtag Baton Rouge because we're in this community, hashtag arts council because that's the community that I am connected to. Those are things that you want to look at. So what's the answer to the question specifically? It is yes, you do want to use specific posts and specific hashtags, but you do want to make sure that they are unique to your industry into the, um, the project that you're working on per se. So what do I mean by that? That's basically hashtag art. Um, if it's canvas, if it's oil painting, if it's fine art, you wanna use those hashtags. If it's a replica of something that you're making or if you're creating something around um, collages, you wanna use those types of hashtags to be able to get them in. And if it's something that you have for yourself when you created a unique, unique brand for yourself, like if you look up hashtag art of hustle, that's something that I always share when it comes to me using social media. So that's a unique hashtag that I've created for myself that's relatable to me so it will pull up my information. You wanna go about hashtags in two ways. You wanna be specific and unique for yourself but then you also want to make sure that you're connecting to that digital world that's out there. And that's exactly what they're used for. Using hashtags that other people are using will always connect you to other folks. And to that question, how do I know if they're truly working? So that's the great thing about getting a Facebook or Instagram page with 
a business profile. When you connect to the business profile, and I'll show you on my own phone actually, I'm gonna pull this up and hopefully you'll be able to see the screen, but it's the best way for me to give you that info. When you have a business profile, you're here. Uh-oh. There are lines right here in this corner. When you hit that, you can go to insights. It's gonna take a while for them to come up. But in here, it will show you new followers and people that you have that are being interactive with your page. When you do that, that will show you here, these are insights. As I mentioned, it tells you impressions. And then it also tells you profile visits, website clicks, and all of those things. But it also shows you people that are engaging with certain posts. So if you click content up there, it tells you people that are engaging with various posts and how they see them. And I'm gonna to go to one specific thing. I'm going to go to one that I use hashtags on. And when you do that, when you're on there, it will show you how many people followed you based upon those hashtags. We're gonna to go to one specifically. As you see in this post, I use a bunch of different hashtags. This is from a speaking engagement. When you're on that specific post, there's view insights. And I would have gotten a manicure if I'd known that I would have been doing this, but it's all about the cause. <laughs> we talked about being authentic. So you see where it shows the different engagements here where people interact with you and how many profile visits? Well, if you scroll through here, uh-oh, phone's being really sensitive. You see where it says from hashtags? And it showed me that 176 people discovered me from a hashtag. So I would say that one worked, right? So you wanna make sure that those are things that you're using. And the, the hashtag thing, it, it's a trick that you have to kind of figure out which ones work and you gotta try it first. So you can't be afraid to try and get that understood um, when it goes there. And you'll figure out which ones work and which ones don't. So again, the way that you see that, you need to create a business profile on your face, on your Instagram. When you do that, what you have to do with it is basically connect it to your Facebook, but that's all here. In this menu, click menu, and then you'll go to settings, which is on the bottom, and business, and you can walk through from there. And again, of course, I gave you the quick version of it. If you go to Google, it'll have that information on there. So we may have some more questions at this point. Yes, are hashtags that are all helpful on Facebook? Not, not really on Facebook. So on Facebook, hashtags are not the strongest. People do use them, but Facebook has not really integrated a way for you to be able to search them the way that you can. But when you use hashtags on any web or digital platform and you Google a hashtag, it will work and it will come up for people to search and find you. It's just not the most convenient way to do it. Okay, one more question. Um, should our content be the same across all social media platforms or should it differ between each one? So there's two ways to skin a cat on that one. Um, I always tell people that you may not have enough time to really push this out in the way that you need to. So when you're first starting, I'll say that you can share content across both platforms. But you have to look at those analytics individually. You wanna look at Facebook separately, and you wanna look at Instagram separately, and here's why. Facebook allows you to be a lot more engaging with words than Instagram does. So with that, you may put a picture and a few words on Instagram where you may be able to engage more a lot on Facebook. And Facebook is also the place where people become a lot more conversational and they talk back and forth with you. So if you're posting something on Facebook, you want to make sure that you can share and get that information. And people are also more communal on Facebook. 
So when you're there, they'll be able to share with you and engage and you'll always see people sharing other people's posts. So as you get to starting in the social media space, it is okay to kind of start that way, but you want to be able to define the content separately on each one as they go. So I hope that was kind of helpful. Okay, these are all the questions we have right now. If you want to continue and I'll let you know if we have any more. Sure. So I will actually keep going from that point and I want to plug up because my computer is not really working well. So let's talk about the magic of marketing and how you can even turn this into it and make sure that you're not contributing to the noise that's already on, on social media. So what do I mean by the noise? The noise are is things that everyone else is posting and when people are not fully engaged. A lot of times you've seen on social where it just turns into this mosh pit of people just posting, posting, posting. How do we know if people are paying attention? How do I know if what I'm saying even matters? Well, the way that you do that, again, is going right back to the story that you are telling. It's really important for you to authentically be yourself because that is the only way that you will stand out. Every person has something very, very unique about themselves. Remember, whatever you're doing is what led you to where you are today. So don't let social media make you change that. That's really, really important. Also, the people that are there, they're motivated by you. They're there for a reason. Every single person that signed up to this signed up because of the actual post that we put out. And people always used to tell me, well, well Courtney, I mean, well, what do you mean by the hustle? Because the hustle is like fast paced and it's moving. And it's like, well, moving fast and that pace and the grind of working every day is what got me to where I am today. So even though I've made a lot of adjustments for more balance within my life, that mindset and that mental space is what still gets me there. So you want to make sure that you're continuously sticking to whatever got you to where you are, however that is about your art. Because people will change day to day, but you have to make sure you're staying the same so people can continue to connect. So what are the important things that you want to make sure that you're sharing for people to stay connected to you? A few of those things are one, your website presence, because yes, you are on social media, but they need a destination to go to, to be able to connect to you. It doesn't have to be the most expensive. It doesn't have to be the fanciest, but they do need a destination of, I found you. I found you on social media. I've liked a few of your posts and now I want to know more. You need that website destination for people to be able to go to, to get that info. The services that I use for that is called Squarespace, squarespace.com, or you can go to WordPress, wordpress.com. There's also Wix, is something that a lot of people have used as well. And Wix and Squarespace are probably the most affordable do-it-yourself options that are out there. Now, does that mean you're going to have the fanciest website or the best one to start? No, but unless you have the dollars to invest within that, that doesn't mean that you can't at least have a footprint on a website. People don't always come to shows. People don't always um, come to events that you have, but if they've discovered you online, you want them to be able to connect to you. And it's almost just like having an address. You can invite people to your party, but if you don't give them an address of where they're going, where are they going to end up, right? So you want to make sure that you do that because as you're going through your funnel, and when you see right back here on the slide that we're on, the end game and that conversion has to go to your website or your digital space because they can either connect with you to get a commission. They can connect with you to find out more information about where your pieces are, are displayed or they can connect to you just to engage as a whole. And those are, that's the end game. The end game of this social media thing is not just to interact day to day on Instagram and Facebook and social media. You want people to be able to connect to you. You want people to be able to get that information from you. And that takes us right back to that same circle of creating, which is your brilliant storytelling. That same brand, that same story will all be with on your web presence as well. And in order for people to want to continue to engage with you, you still go back to that captivating pro level content. Take the time to invest in yourself 
and your art, because if you do not, at least that one time, people may not be inspired to connect with you because a bad photo will do you no justice. And I'll pause there again because I'm pretty sure we may have more questions. Okay, um, have any, do you have any advice on building a community around your art, whether online or offline? So I always like to start offline. Um, and I know that's crazy because we live in a digital age, but there's nothing like that authentic connection. Arts Council has so many opportunities for people to connect and know that it's not a sponsored or paid advertisement for me to say that, but they really, really do. The reason why I'm even here today is through an authentic connection with Ashley and Renee and Kelsey and everyone over there at Arts Council, meeting them in real life day to day, made us build a network where we connected to each other and we're able to continuously share in a circle for whatever we may have going on. And when you have that offline connection, that's where you let people know. If you look at the section that says growing your audience, inviting your neighbors, that's not your literal neighbors next door, but it's the people right here in this messages with you. It's the people that are right here, inviting them, liking and following, engaging with them really work. The second thing that I would say to that is find a group of people that you're inspired by, that you follow and engage on their comments, engage in the conversations that they are having, because when you say something that people like, they'll click on your page, they'll follow, and then you'll start to make those authentic connections. Networking on in the digital world is just like networking off offline. When you have a real connection, you want more and people will choose to stay connected to you. So I hope that that was a good answer and gave you some insight. Okay, if you have any questions, please send them my way. Okay, do you recommend tagging other Instagram people in your posts, such as groups with larger followings? So again, you have to make sure that those connections are authentic. There's nothing wrong with doing it, but if you want to see the results, there has to be a reason why you're connecting with them. For example, most of the time people will connect or post a brand in their page. Well, that's because they're trying to get noticed by that brand. But if you were to tag your screen right now today and to post it and you knew my social media and of course Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge's social media, you absolutely would tag and post that in your message because there are people who are authentically connected here day to day. If you're in a photo with people, and that's a great way to connect. If you're at an event, take photos with strangers and tag them in it because people love reposting those things and sharing them. If you're engaging in a conversation with someone and it's relevant, sure, absolutely tag them in it. But doing it just because it's something that people do. But remember, we're here for true uh, conversion, engagement, and that end game. So you want to make sure that there's a reason that you're tagging and connecting people. Okay, any more questions? I don't have any more questions, Courtney. Do you have anything else or? Well, the one last thing that I'm gonna do is to tell you to stay connected with me. <laughs> and of course that's on Instagram at Watch Court Work. That's the place where I am the most um, engaging, the place where I spend the most of my time is through Instagram. But the thing about that is too, you know, one question that people, first question that someone asks is where should you be? I totally believe in being in the place that you're going to engage. Yes, I have a Facebook page, but um, I only go on there from time to time. It just takes a lot more time. Whereas on Instagram, because I'm on the move and because I'm sharing things, I'm able to engage there. So I, I want to make sure that I leave you guys with a few key things. Number one, do what works for you. First, try it. Get into the groove of doing what you're doing, but it has to be what tr truly works for you. Number two, how do you even figure out what works for you? Start where you are that day. Don't feel like you have to start with, I did say get a professional photographer and work and do all those things. But if that's just not where you are right now, don't feel inspired that you have to do that. You want to get there and you want to do it, but you also want to just start where you are. And then number three, remember to be yourself because the art of hustle is not subjecting to the pressure of social media, not subjecting to the pressure of the digital world, but truly starting with yourself. 
Um, and that's something that you have to get comfortable with and putting it out there. Perfect is not always something that's achievable. So that's the reality of the world we live in. So just start where you are and can't wait to see you out there in the digital world. Okay, we actually got some more questions, Courtney. Okay. Uh, <laughs> how often should we post? Daily? So remember there's this thing about engagement that I told you about. And I'm gonna go back to share. Engagement is something you always wanna look at. So if you look here, it shows that I had 238 profile views in the last seven days. Well, I have not been doing a lot of posting. That's why it's so low. On the biggest part of it, it will, it will probably be up to about 700 to 1,000. But again, I'm not subjecting to the pressure of social media because if I was not on social, then that means that I had a lot of real life engagements that sometimes work better than the digital world. You have to do what works for you. So I would definitely say to develop a rhythm of posting. And I'll tell you a few go-to apps that I use for uh, scheduling. So don't believe the hype that everybody's posting all day, every day, because they do have scheduling apps out there. One of them is called Planoly, P-L-A-N-O-L-Y. Now that one does have a bit of an investment that you have to put into it. And when I say investment, it's not big. It's like $8 a month, but apps are expensive. And if you have a lot of them that you pay for, sometimes it doesn't work. So that's this right here with this P, P-L-A-N-O-L-Y. This is a great, great, great app that you're able to schedule your post and your comments and things in it. Now that does only work for Instagram, but then there's also Hootsuite. Hootsuite, H-O-O-T, Suite, S-U-I-T-E. Hootsuite works for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So that might be a better option for you. You can figure out which ones that you like, but you can pre plan and schedule your post. Um, I would definitely suggest if you are not doing anything, posting once a day is great. But if you get to the point where you can post a couple of times a day, that's great. But if it's not intentional, and again, it's not authentic, don't do it just because, because then it turns into spam and it contributes to that noise that we were talking about. And um, I'll tell you the power of social media, of just putting that out. Shout out to Miss Katie Becker, who's on this and just followed me and sent me a message. So I'm happy that you're enjoying the webinar, Katie, and I'm happy that uh, you got some insight from it because I'm enjoying being here too. But just like that, we now have a connection and we're there being able to share with each other. And that is the power of the digital world. And I was just authentically being me. So um, sharing that knowledge and doing what I do best. So I can't wait to see everybody else do the same thing. I know we have a little bit more time so we can keep answering questions. Okay. What is the best way to share information for an upcoming event? That's where those hashtags come into play. So think about what type of event it is. I always encourage people to use Eventbrite. Um, Eventbrite is something where you can put your event up for free. And if you're selling tickets, they'll take a, like a small incremental amount off of the ticket, but you can't put free events up for free. You can share it on Facebook. You can import emails and send out email blasts all through Eventbrite. So I would definitely say on Eventbrite. And then second, always make a Facebook event because you, your neighbors, your friends, your supporters, other people involved can all share that on Facebook with your groups to be able to get that info out there. Okay, we have another question. What's your advice on YouTube channels? Whew. All right, let's talk about YouTube for a second. And I don't really go there on conversations like this because um, it's a lot of detail to be able to share. Um, the YouTube channels are really, really great if you're dedicated to it. If you're dedicated to sharing information and putting it out there, because once you get that audience, it's just like TV. They're really there and ready to watch and ready to do it. So I actually just mentioned to someone today, using YouTube really works if you need a place to host a video, but you want to share it somewhere else. Like you can take a YouTube link and embed it on Facebook. You can take a YouTube link and put it on your website. But then there's also the option of really using YouTube. Um, so whoever asked that question, if you're on, if you're on Instagram, please shoot me a DM and I'll be glad to kind of vet some things with you and go day to day. But there's so many options and ways to use YouTube. It probably wouldn't be fair um, to share that. But I do think that it's a great, great platform. 
to get started and host your videos to be able to put them on your website. And the one thing that I would say too is work with a professional, even if it's an amateur professional, there are high school students that are amazing at YouTube. So that would be my advice with that. And I hope I answered the question at least a little bit. Courtney, someone's asking, do you help people with marketing privately too? I absolutely do. Um, we take a very, very small, uh, limited group of people every quarter because we do a quarterly program that I can share more about if you send me a message as well. And I also give everyone my email address too. Um, but it's something that we do called Building with Buy-in. So Building with Buy-in is an eight-week program where we take you through discovery, discovering where you are, what you have going on, and what you're trying to achieve. And then we also have um, a growth session where you not only build your marketing plan, but your sustainability plan as well. Because one thing about our company when it comes to marketing is that we want to make sure that people are sustainable. A lot of people show you how to do marketing, but marketing is not cheap. And it's something you want to make sure that you're doing within your budget. So um, I will share my email. You can contact me or you can also contact Ashley as well or send me a message on Instagram. But my email address is C Scott, C S C O T T at B Y A N group.com. So C Scott at buying group.com. I just sent that out to everyone in the chat as well. No problem. Okay, any more questions before we close? Courtney, this information has been so wonderful. I've gotten some private messages on chat, just how great um, the webinar has been. We thank you so much. Great, absolutely. I'm always here to help um, and share everything that I can. Um, this is really great information that people need to use. And there's ways that you can do it without paying for marketing. There are definitely ways that you can do it for yourself. So I'm always here to share as many resources to get people started. Great. Well, thank you everyone for being on here today. This is going to be a monthly webinar series, Create You is what we've titled it. Um, our next one's actually going to be February 27th. That's Wednesday, February 27th with Andre Dubrop with Red Six Media. He's going to be doing the artist business, an entrepreneurial approach to an artist's work. So for all those artists and entrepreneurs out there, this is definitely for you. And we'll have more information. Um, if you want, again, if you want more information on the Arts Council, please visit artsvr.org. And um, if you have any other questions for Courtney, we have the email in the chat. And we'll also be sending out the recording of this webinar um, later today. Awesome. Anything else before we leave, Courtney? That's it. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.